Today we're talking to St Albans City manager Ian Anderson after a sensational afternoon at Clarence Park where the Saints moved into a top four of National League South with a 4-0 drubbing of league leaders Dartford. We were all expecting a tough game Ian but uh, at the end of it we're just looking for all the superlatives to throw at your side. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I take a ball what you say there but I felt it was a tough game. I thought it was a tough game for, for the until we got the fourth goal and then you know, they made three substitutions and picked an injury up and then I felt it become quite comfortable but up till half time I thought the game was a little bit open, a little bit end to end, you know, they've had chances, we've had chances and you know it's fortunate that we got the two goals just before half time and we could have had a third when Zane went through and I think if we'd have got that then we'd have felt a bit more comfortable but you know the way they play and the balls they get in the box and the quality they get in the box you're always going to be susceptible to a to a goal from a set piece and I think they've hit the post twice today from, from uh, set pieces which have come out to people who have rifled them back in. So, yeah, it was uh, it become comfortable in the end. But I felt for a long time it was it was a tough game against a very tough side. That first 20 minutes, it was fantastic stuff. Both sides were going for it, tremendously entertaining. Chances at either end. But after that, we got those two goals, as you say. We could have had the third. But then we got those two goals again in the second half. And in the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I wouldn't say they threw him a towel, but it weren't far off it. Well, I think, as I say, you've got to. I think we've got to take some credit out of ourselves for for the way the players have performed today and have performed last week. But you know, when they when they play and they're on song like this, you know, they take a lot of stopping. And full credit to Dartford because they say they came at us and uh, it, it it was end to end. As I say, it was like a basketball game in that first uh, first 45 minutes. And then you're questioning how your fitness is going to hold up in a game like this because a lot of players were blowing, a lot of players were were out on their feet by the time we got to sort of 30 minutes because it was end to end. But in the end, as I say, we've, we've managed to to get the third and the fourth, which I think settled us down. And and uh, as I say, I think they lost their, their their momentum in that last 20 minutes. I think it was just a back to the wall. And I hope, so, hope we don't get beat too many in the end. And you see, we've got some great areas. But I just felt we didn't finish the game off again a bit like we did last week in that last 10, 15 minutes. We didn't move the ball quick enough like we'd done for the first 75, 80 minutes because I felt we moved it so quick in the first half. Our passing, our movement, and, and, and even then, you know, you, we still had three or four really good opportunities where they've just gone past the post. We've ended up with us hitting the post, them hitting the post, and uh, they're keeping making a couple of good saves. Dean's had to make a save. I think Tarek's made a last ditch tackle. So it was a great game, fantastic game to be involved in, and I think we, we all want to be involved in that. You know, on a terrible day today, we've had 800 people turn up here, which is outstanding, it's fantastic. And hopefully they've gone away again as they did last week with, with some enjoyment, so we've got to take it forward. I think that's two thirds of the way through the season. We've got to go and see, finish the season off now, and we've got to make sure we don't have these blips like we do, where we go through um, little phases where we, we win games, lose games, and draw games. You know, we've got to make sure we approach every game as we've been approaching them, and, and make sure we're picking up the three points. One heck of a week for Sam Merson. Four goals last Saturday. Signs a new contract midweek, and got those crucial first two goals today. Yeah, I mean the thing is with Sam, we've been talking to him since uh, since before Christmas about a new deal for, for next year. So, you know, it just probably put the icing on the cake that we had to move pretty quick this week once he scored the four goals. So, it was done all very very quickly. You know, Tuesday we sat down with him, and uh, by Thursday the deal was signed. So, fantastic from our point of view. Great for the boy because you know he is a player there, and and certainly from me as a manager, if you looked at him you, you, and if you work with a boy, somebody in the football league will take a chance with him. So, it's great from the football club's point of view because you know if he does move on. Now we're going to make some money out of it, which is what's, what's only right. That we've spent a lot of time with the boy, we've worked hard with the boy, we work hard in training with him. And it's just unfortunate, as I said there, I think it's 19 goals he's got this year. He's missed a month through, through the tackle at Hemel, which I keep going on about, which nobody's seeing apart from myself. So um, we have to take that on board. He's our player now for the next two and a half years, which is fantastic. And we've got to take that forward now and, and keep working with him. And hopefully in a couple of years' time, he won't be here. He'll be at a football league club because he deserves it. Because you've seen again the two goals he scored today, outstanding for somebody of his size. Percy Kianja Benny got another excellent goal from the edge of the box. Not bad when the centre half keeps doing that. But also you felt we could have pulled the trigger a few more times from around about that sort of distance. Yeah, I think Ben Hurd had one late on. I think um, Solomon's had one. I think Kieran's had one. Kieran got in actually and sort of side foot into the keeper's hands and. We've had three or four opportunities where we picked him up, but again, as you say, you know, Percy's, you know, he's curled one in or smashed one in with his left foot last week, and he's curled one in with his right foot this week. So, full credit to the, to, as I said to you, you know, the players deserve all the credit because they're the ones that have gone and put the performance in. You know, we speak to them at length, we work hard in training, and and hopefully something's clicked in there. Then their little minds are theirs because all of a sudden now there's a there's a real enthusiasm in terms of what we're trying to do. There's an enthusiasm in the way we train. I've always felt we train unbelievably well. We pass the ball for fun, 
um, and our movement is now starting to come in there. And you know, we're going to have hiccups on the way in. We've got to remain positive. You know, we've got to remain focused on what we're trying to do. And, and, and first and foremost, is we've got to make the playoffs. You know, what, as I said to you last week, if we can get second or third, it'd be great. If we can win it, it'd be even better. But you know, they're the things we've got to aim for now. And I've said to the players again after the game, don't don't let go of what you've got here in terms of looking back at the end of the season and looking back and thinking, you know, we should have done this, we should have done that. It's in, it's in my hands, it's in, as I said, the management's hands, it's in the physio's hands, the, everybody that's in that change room, it's in our hands to do something this year. And if we do it right, we'll have chances of getting in the playoffs. If we don't, we'll end up 8th or 9th again. And that's what we have to look for, a consistency that will get us over this line going into the last 14 games of the season. Rhys Morrell Williamson, people have voiced concern that he's plays predominantly on his left foot, so Dartford invited him to go on his right today, and he did, and he almost made them pay for it several times, and he rightly picked up the Man of Match award. Well, um, and, and this is things that we've spoke to him about, is, you know, we've said if they're going to show you down there with your pace, go. And at the end of the day, it's just having that confidence with his right foot of making sure that he just swing it and smash it across the face of the goal, and they might slice it in their own net, and you see in the first half today, there's once or twice there where he's actually done that, and it's just gone whistling past their own post, so they could have quite easily gone in there in their own nets for goals from that side of it but you know, the kids he, he's just got to get the consistency and he knows that I know that and we speak to him at length about the consistency and today I see a really consistent performance in fact I see an outstanding performance today from a from a right winger and you know he's predominantly left footed but now what he's doing now is he's, he's now managers and fullbacks and teams are not sure what he's going to do because all of a sudden every time you play against him you show him on his right or their right foot your right foot their right foot your right foot and all of a sudden now he's going on the outside, so now players, managers, everybody, you've got to start thinking about, well, OK, if we show him inside, he might go on the outside. If we show him on the outside, he'll come on the inside. So, great from his point of view, and he's got to obviously take that on board, but he's got to be consistent. And today he was consistent, and he knows, and I think we all know that he's, he hasn't been as consistent week in, week out, week in, week out. So, and that's the level he has to get, and if he does that week in, week out, he won't be at this football club, you know, somebody will take a chance of him, but, you know, we have to have that consistency with him. Last week, Dean Snedko had a difficult first half against East Farrock. Uh, today, his handling was impeccable, and he came out just before half-time and took a free kick amongst a cluster of players, and you just felt that knocked a bit more stuffing out of him. Well, again, you know, we, as I said to, to Reese, the goalkeeping coach, in, in, in midweek, that you know, I went back to the Chelmsford game, which I think was the fifth or sixth game of the season, and we spoke about um, how Dean had come and collected crosses and how Dean had come through people and took the pressure off us at Chelmsford and he was outstanding and it was just the things that we've worked on again, putting lots of crosses in on Thursday night for, for Sam to come and head balls and, uh, and for Dean to come and collect them and I think again, you know, a bit of confidence from him, he come and collected, it was a great, it was, it was really, I think it was a minute to go before half time and it was so important he came and did that because it, it took the pressure off, if they'd have scored there going in at 2-1 it would have been slightly different but you know, that's what we need our keeper to do because when he's coming and doing that he's got his clean sheet today which is his reward and I think in the league it's probably the first clean sheet since back to um, some I think it was Hungerford back in uh, October, November time so it's great from his point of view and it's great from the back four's point of view. A couple of players from the National League have moved to the Football League. You've spoken about the likes of Reese and Sam here. Was there any um, approaches sort of this week? No, we had no approaches. There was um, there was one or two little rumours, but you know we never had any approaches from anybody. So you know at the end of the day we didn't we didn't really want to get into that that remit of what happened last year with Junior and uh, losing Junior in this period last year was probably. The biggest thing I think at the time we didn't think it would affect us, but I think it did going into the second half of the season. But you know, as I've said, and I'll say it to Sam, and I've said it to every single player at this football club, I and this football club won't stand in anybody's way. If a football club comes in from the football league, we will do our best to make them football league players because they deserve it. They've come into this football club, they've come in and listened to what we've had to say to them. And the one thing I always try and say to them, I'll push you and I'll work with you and I'll try and get you back to being a football league player. Or if you've not already been there, we'll try and make you a football league player. And if you can do that and somebody takes a chance of you, me, the football club, anybody at this football club will not stand in these players' way. And we've given them our word on that. But it's got to be right for me. It's got to be right for St Albans City Football Club. It's got to be right for the owners. And it's also got to be right for the supporters because... You know, we've worked hard with this, with this group of lads, um, they're a pleasure to be around, they, they all want to play football, there's a great energy about them and, 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 and they're good footballers, and, but we've just got to get that consistency now, that's the most important thing. And what about incomings, I spotted Junaid Mead, former City player, warming up there before the... 
Well, Jermaine, Jermaine has been um, training with us over the last couple of weeks. He's, he's been in Sweden and they've got, a, they've got a break now. I think it's their, it's their break, actually. So, you know, he's going back again, I think, towards the end of March time before the season starts up again. So he's training with us. He's looking to get fit. The, the problem we have is bringing him in. If we was to sign him and, and, and keep him for sort of six, that's eight weeks, we disrupt slightly what we've got. Um, if if Jermaine decides he wants to stay in, in the UK and play in the UK, then we'll sort of sit down with him and discuss things with him. But it gets very complicated in getting international clearance from, from the Swedish FA and bringing him back into England. And then when he goes back, he has to get uh, international clearance from the, the English FA to go back into Sweden. So if Jermaine, Jermaine decides he wants to come here and he wants to try and talk to us about a deal, we'll sit and talk to him, but until then he'll just be training with us, keeping himself fit, but he's also really good to have around the training because he's such a quality player and he brings the best out in some of the other players as well. We're at Hunger for Town next Saturday in. Down here we should have won by a country mile, but we didn't take our chances that day. Our attitude's got to be right next week, isn't it? Well, we've just been probably sitting here now for 10, 12 minutes, should I say, talking about um, consistency and, and that's the thing that, that we have to try and make the players aware of that we need week in week out because you know you can put a performance on like that for, for an hour last week, performance like that today, we now need to go and put a performance on but we know it'll be a slightly different game, the pitch is, the pitch is poor down there, we know it's going to be a game where you're not going to be able to play the game in, in the style we want to play. But that's football at the end of the day and we have to go and grind out results. You see with Man City at the moment, you know, they were taking the league by storm. Teams have obviously worked out a system to try and play against them. They've tried to stop them by fouling them and, and it becomes very, very tough. So you've got to overcome all those obstacles to win a game of football. Now, if we can go and get a scrappy 1-0 win next week, I'll be over the moon because you're not going to have performances like this we've had for the last two weeks, week in, week out. Teams are not going to allow you to play football like you've played today. Um, and we've got to go and work hard, we've got to scrap for our results and if it's a safe, it's a 1-0 scrap we win next week, that would be just as important as this nice 4-0 win again today. Quick word about Harold Joseph, first few months of the season, uh, very much one of the stars of the side, got injured, can't get back into the side and out on loan at Hendon at the moment. Well, it's exactly the same, I mean we haven't got a reserve side and it's exactly what I've said to Harold last week and, and Tom Gardner's probably in the same situation, both of them were outstanding at the beginning of the season. And Tarek and, uh, and Percy have come in and I think that's one defeat in 11 or 12 games as a partnership. Um, and it's a strange partnership because you know he, Percy's a midfield player playing there and Tarek's come back from a broken leg and still fighting to regain this fitness at times. On a Thursday we can't train him because he's, uh, his leg gets quite sore training on the Astro Surf. So we're patching him up on a Thursday, you know, we're getting him out on a Saturday and then we have to patch him up again in midweek until we can get a load of work in the summer into, into the broken leg that he's got there. But it's a strange partnership that seems to have worked for us and it's worked for them too. So it was either Tom goes out for a month or Harold goes out just to get some games because I can't, there's no reserve games for me. They're both contracted players so, you know, we have to try and get some games because if one or two of these pick injuries up going into the running, I need to make sure I've got a fit, fully fit, match fit Harold Joseph which is going to benefit us going into the last few games of the season. So, I see they've won 4-2 today which is great for them. I'll speak to Harold tomorrow and speak to Gary McCann at Hendon. But it's worked for both parties at the end of the day. It gives them a, a, a good player. Um, but Harold will come back, he's very much part of what we want to do at this football club and then we might have to see who's going to be fit, who's not fit and we might have to get one or two of the others out as we go into the final few weeks of the season. Lovely, thanks so much Ian, congratulations, that's the uh, first time in just over 23 years that we scored 11 goals in two successive home <laughs> league games. So right, Saints next in action right, on Saturday the 10th of February, away to Hungerford Town, National League South, kick-off at 3pm.